Welcome back, everyone, to all the Golden Grizzly social media channels. It's my great honor today to be joined by now a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, he, that, that word gets thrown on, around a lot with this guy. He is a swimming and diving coach, Pete Hovlin, now a member of the Summit League Hall of Fame. And Pete, appreciate your time. And, you know, Pete, let, let's just jump into it. This is a conversation you and I have had a lot uh, throughout your career. But Pete, I, I, in, in my opinion, I, I think this one might be very special for you because Oakland – the relationship with the Summit League, uh, that carried a certain legacy with what you were able to do for Oakland coming into Division One. I. I mean, you guys set a standard. You guys raised the perception of Oakland Athletics. And uh, congratulations, my friend. Thank you. But, uh, hey, before we get into this too far, uh, uh, I'd like to congratulate you on uh, the best sports play-by-play uh, -play play for uh, uh, Best Detroit 2020, dude. I'm talking to uh, – uh, you know, quite the, the, the personality and, and, and the, the voice, man. This is great. Well, I, I figured I knew I was going to be talking to you and I had to up my honors game. You know, like if you're going to have a conversation with Pete Hovlin, you can't, you can't come to the room empty handed, man. You, you have to be bringing honors of your own. But no, I, I certainly do appreciate that. But that ties back into what I was saying, though. I mean, uh, the bricks, and this is something I've always talked about, the, the bricks were put in place for everybody to have success a long time ago. And, and your, you, your yeah. program certainly played a big part in that. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it, it, it kind of came at a, at, at a good time for me. You know, we, were just, we, we just won uh, four NCAA championships, uh, Division Two on the men's side, and the women had just come off of five uh, consecutive championships. And, uh, you know, all along that had been a goal of mine. You know, I, I, I was fortunate as an athlete to win four NCAA championships when I was swimming for Chico State back in the 70s. And, the first year we were here, I was an assistant coach when we won in 1980 with the men, and and uh, then being a head coach of the men's program, it took me a while to get there, but uh, we won those championships, and that kind of was was one of my ultimate goals is was to win as a, to win as a coach as well, and and we did it, and and it kind of came at a good time for for me professionally, personally, and and, and professionally, but. Uh, I think for the department as well, you know, the basketball programs, the soccer programs, we, we were all on a roll back there and, you know, in, 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 um, during that time and, uh, you know, the late 90s and stuff. And um, I think for the university as a whole, it was growing at a very rapid pace. And uh, the students uh, chose to build a brand new rec center facility in, in which, you know, the swim program obviously benefited by but having the, you know, the nicest uh, 50 meter complex in the state. And, and so it just kind of seemed like it was just destined to be, you know, it just kind of all came together. We, we were all winning and, and I was like, okay, what, what, what's next, you know, what's next for the university? What, what, what's next for us? And uh, when we, we heard the rumors that we were talking about going to division one, we we're all like, well, yeah, let's do it. You know, we're, we're, we're on board. And, uh, so I, I think, you know, Gary Parsons and, and Greg and myself and, uh, you know, some of the other coaches that had some tenure there, I, I think we were all ready for the challenge, you know. And, and so, um, uh, again, I, I think it was good for the community. It was, it was good for, you know, the university and a lot of us individually and professionally. And, and uh, so, uh, um, you know, it, it, it came at a good time. Pete Hovland joining us here, newly minted member of the Summit League Hall of Fame. His program certainly dominant over the stretch when the Golden Grizzlies were a member of the Summit League. I mean, if you go by results, uh, they claimed every team championship during the entire run, which certainly, I mean, you don't, I mean, put that in perspective, Pete. I mean, people talk about Alabama football and the dynasty that Nick Saban uh, has built there. I mean, you guys are to that and even above that in, in terms of your accomplishments and what you've done. I mean, it, I, I don't want to, I don't want to take away from it, but it, it's almost to a point, it almost becomes noise sometimes in that, Oh, you know, Oakland swimming and diving one again. I mean, you know, and that's something that you and I have, have talked about a lot that that pressure that you feel internally, that's something where, you know, if anything, it makes you focus more, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And, you know, and, and we definitely felt it, you know, we, we felt like, you know, okay, we've got a lot at stake here. You know, the university has made a huge investment in this and a commitment to this saying, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, this, this is what's best for the university. And we, we, we certainly as coaches, I'm sure probably felt it individually that we didn't want to fall flat on our face. And, and I know for the swimming program and speaking on behalf of the program that, you know, we were coming into, 
uh, you know, at the time it was mid-continent before it changed the name to the summit, you know, that, that uh, Western Illinois had won eight championships consecutively. Uh, uh, Jerry Champer, uh, you know, had been really putting it together there at, at Western and stuff. And we really felt we had our work out, you know, our work cut out for us. And we had no idea that we, we would have the success that we did at the time, but it, we, we certainly knew we'd have a challenge. And uh, that, that's kind of what I think was our motivation was, was the challenge was there, that there was a, a team that, that, that had exhibited, you know, excellence in their own way for a long period of time. And, and they were the, the, the bell cow, so to speak. And, and uh, uh, so we, we kind of used them as the example and that we wanted to, to, to meet that challenge. And, and, and so that's kind of what we focused in on. And, and uh, um, again, not knowing that, you know, it would go for 14 consecutive years like it did. And, uh, but we, we wanted to be the best that we could possibly be in, in the conference. And we wanted to help raise the, the level um, of the Summit League um, to be one of the, one of the better mid-major swimming conferences in the country. And that was another goal of ours administratively and, uh, you know, athletically for, for the team and, and, and for my staff and I. And so uh, um, that, that's what we set our sights on. And, and we were fortunate along the way to win a few. Pete Ovlin joining us here, legendary swim and dive coach for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies, now a member of the Summit League Hall of Fame. And you know, Pete, what about that? You look at the Summit League Hall of Fame, you, you look at this class that's gone in there as well. I, I saw George Hill's name on the list. Uh, yeah. yeah. Long time, long time uh, NBA guy. You're also a member of the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. You went into a pretty power packed class uh, <laughs> with, with that as well. As some big time names. I mean, again, going back to it, if, if we were able to go back in time, and we go back to Chico State, and, and I'm talking to a, a young, spry, debonair-looking, <laughs> uh, just great-looking young man in Pete Hovland. And I told you, Pete, I'm from the future, and these are the names that, that your athletic career is going to be associated with. I, how much would you have laughed? Or would yeah, you? Yeah, I'd still be, you know, and it's kind of thing. And, uh, um, yeah, no, no, no concept at that time. And, you know, I, I, I've been blessed and I've been fortunate to be around some good people early in my life that have helped shape me personally and professionally. And I give a lot of credit, as you know, to, to Dr. McGlisco, Ernie McGlisco, my coach at Chico State, and then my mentor, you know, the person that saw something in me, you know, after I got done swimming as, 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 as a possible uh, uh, professional in, in, in this business and, and grabbed onto me and took me under his wings here at Oakland and, and uh, fortunately had that opportunity. But I, I, I've been blessed, you know, the Corey Van Fleet, our athletic director, way back saw something in me that when Ernie left to, 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 you know, to turn the reins over to me and, and uh, you know, throughout, uh, throughout my, my tenure at Oakland, there's just been certain things and certain people that have come in my life at certain times that have, that have helped me uh, accomplish a lot of these things. But to go back to your question, there's no, there's no, you know, I mean, I, I, I thought of winning a national championship as a coach and that was my dream at the time. And fortunately was able to accomplish that and stuff, but uh, to be, uh, to be named uh, uh, in, into the hall of fames that I have uh, with the kind of people that I have. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's a, a real, a real pipe dream. And, and uh, never really thought at the time that something like this could happen. And, I'm very, very humbled and, and, and honored that uh, um, I've had a lot of good people help me along the way to, to accomplish some of the things that we've accomplished. And lastly, Pete, before we let you go here, and certainly do appreciate the time as we talk about your induction to the Summit League Hall of Fame, I, and, and college coaches unilaterally across the board, and you and I have talked about this before, Coach Campy, Coach Poe, Coach Parson, all of them uh, that I've ever talked to. I mean, the bottom line is, is you can't get this done without the student athletes that you've had walk through those doors throughout the years. And those student athletes have gone on to greatness in the pool, in life, uh, and, and at really every facet. I mean, you, you've had swimmers come through that, that have been national champions, swimmers come through that have competed in the Olympics, and uh, really any level of swimming, and, and maybe more importantly, Pete, any level of life, uh, you've had your student athletes accomplish that. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I, I've been fortunate, and I think some of those, uh, uh, you know, you, you put it in perspective when you, when you look back at some of those athletes during that time, during that run, and, and especially in the Summit League and stuff, and, 
and then you, you realize, okay, yeah, we, we, we do belong. We, we did make the right choice. We, we can do this. We can compete. We, we can compete at this level and we can do it very, very, very well. And it's a, a, a funny story that uh, when, when this all happened and came about, it gave me a chance to reflect back. And when we started talking about, you know, the Scott Dickens of the worlds and the Marcin Unolds and, and Anders Jensen's and, you know, Tatiana Kornienko, who just went into our Hall of Fame this past year and stuff, you know, those names. And it's, it's when you walk onto the pool deck at the Division I National Championships with these kids, you know, and, and, and they do as well as, as they do, you know, that kind of helps cement the, the fact what I just said, that, you know, we, 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 do, we do belong. But I needed them to kind of help me <laughs> Uh, proved to me that yeah yeah at times we we do belong and and we're here and I think it was uh, I'm trying to think it was 2003 or four maybe I had probably my largest contingent of Division One qualifiers and we took them to Texas for the Division One Men's National Championship and I had five guys Chris Sullivan and Scott Dickens two individuals that uh, uh, and and then we had four of the five relays and and uh, I think that's the highest place we've been in Division One I. I think we were top maybe 24, top 25 in the country, maybe, I can't remember now, but, but uh, we got to the meet, and the first night we were there, we went over to the pool to warm up with these guys, and this just kind of shows you, you know, kind of where we'd come, and, and it, we'd even been Division One for a couple of years, and, and uh, after we got done warming, uh, warming up and stuff, and checking out the pool, and looking at Cal, and Stanford, and Texas, and, and, and all these programs, and all these great swimmers that they'd read about, and seen, and in the Olympics and stuff, and that they'd heard all about walking past us and getting in the same lane with them and stuff. That I just felt that there was like, God, you know, maybe maybe we don't belong, you know, and and just by their actions and and, and but by the, the way they were behaving and stuff. And fortunately, one of the fathers or parents came, and we were so new, we we, we even forgot a team banner. And so one of the parents had brought one of these little small little flags, these little. Oakland flag all it said was Oakland on it and it wasn't very big really and and uh, he uh, he was there at the warm-up for him he said hey coach I thought you guys might want this and, and so he threw it to me and said okay and there was this little space on the wall where we were sitting warming up and in between uh, Texas and Stanford I think and just just enough for this flag to fit and so we grabbed out of that med kit some athletic tape and I taped it up there and the guys are kind of looking at me coach come on you know and they they, look, they looked like they're embarrassed and stuff and I said okay come on everybody get over here and I put the flag up there the Oakland banner and I said let's do a cheer you know and and um, we as you know you've been around the program a lot it's been kind of tradition the OU pride is the thing that swimmers for gen generations and decades have, had, have said and it means a lot to us and our program and I said come on everybody get in your hands in and uh, we, we start every practice uh, back at school with the same thing, OU Pride. And I said, come on, let's, let's, let's do an OU Pride. And their heads were down. And they, they wanted no part of it. And I said, come on, we're here. It's real. You know, and they did. And I said, say it with, you know, some enthusiasm and stuff. And they did. And I think at that moment, it kind of broke the ice a little bit. And, and we, we had some fun. And, and we probably had one of the best uh, NCAA championships we've had. And, and, and it really did a lot for our program. And I, I'm really indebted to those guys and, and uh, humoring me a little bit on that day at that moment and stuff. And, uh, uh, but from, from then on, it's, a, it's just I, I think people come into our program, you know, know what to expect. And, and they, they know we can compete at the highest level. Well, Pete, I, I certainly think it's safe to say that you guys have been carrying that flag uh, ever since, uh, not only for the swimming and diving program, but for Oakland as a whole. And, you know, look, uh, you know, this, this is the job, what we do here and everything, but you, you've also become a friend to me as well throughout the years. And, and I'm honored to talk to you and I'm very happy for you as well, Pete. So congratulations. Really appreciate it, Neil. Thanks a lot. Absolutely appreciate your time as well. So for the legendary swimming dive coach, Pete Hovland, my name is Neil Rule, the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. Thank you for watching, everybody. Well, see you later.